Cool. Uh, yeah, so hi everyone. Thanks for coming to my talk. Um, my name's Elena Rastogova. I work on the Nemo toolkits at NVIDIA, and that's what I'll be presenting today. Uh, before I start, you may have heard about NVIDIA and Nemo in a couple of different contexts. And I just want to like be clear that uh, I'm talking specifically um, at this talk about Nemo toolkit, which is open source and uh, has a GitHub repository. Um, so what is uh, Nemo toolkit? It's an open source toolkit for conversational AI and LLMs. Um, like I mentioned, uh, it lives in this GitHub repository um, and the code is released under an Apache 2.0 license. And it's a toolkit for training ML models for various conversational AI domains. Um, the main uh, current domains are automatic speech recognition, LLMs, and text-to-speech. And also, uh, coming soon, we have some multimodal code in the pipeline for things like text-to-image and text-to-3D. Um, today, I'm going to cover some Numo fundamentals and then go through each of the three main domains in order. Um, you might notice that the ASR section will be a little bit extra heavy uh, because ASR is kind of the thing I have um, most experience with. Um, right, so let's get into it. Your first question uh, might be, how do I install Nemo Toolkit? Um, and the answer is, uh, you can either use pip install or you can use a Docker container. And we release a new Docker container with each uh, Nemo release. Um, you might also be wondering, do you have pre-trained models that I can play around with? And yes, we do. Uh, so you can browse for the models on NVIDIA NGC or on Hogging Face Hub. Uh, you can use them out of the box, or you can also take them and fine-tune uh, fine them. Um, and yeah, you can even, um, there's no need to download them explicitly. You can also um, automatically load them in code. Uh, so you can call like dot mo model pt dot from pre-trained, and it will automatically download the models either from NGC or Hogging Face Hub. And a bit of a note about the models. So the models uh, live in uh, model files, which have uh, a .nemo extension. Um, and all that is is really just an uh, archive file, like any ordinary tar file. And you can see here I extracted um, an ASR model that we have. And inside, there's um, a CKPT file containing the model weights, a YAML file with the model config, and some files that we need for the tokenizer for the model. Um, a couple more things. So, um, Nemo actually you might be wondering about the name. Uh, so, the name originated from neural modules. Um, so, when Nemo was created, uh, the team was really focused on making sure that it's made up of composable building blocks. Um, and that's kind of uh, something we've kept throughout each of the domains. And another advantage is that ASR, LLM, and TTS domains have the same look and feel. Um, and also, the multimodal domain coming up also will have that as well. Um, yeah, training is with PyTorch Lightning, um, so that means it's really easy to scale to 1,000 plus GPUs. Um, and additionally, if you're interested in LLM, um, L the LLM domain leverages Megatron Core, which means that you can scale your models up to 1 trillion parameters. Um, yeah, and I thought this is, uh, this is kind of maybe the most dense slide. Um, I thought I would cover a little bit about how you would uh, get started with Nemo. So you can see that it's, it's quite straightforward. Um, so this is a typical training script, um, and this is uh, for training a GPT model from scratch. And um, this, it's, it's quite like simple, and I'll go through with some of the things that are going on here. So if you're training from scratch, you need to choose a Nemo model class, and here we have a GPT model. You need to specify config a YAML file. Um, by default, uh, it will use config slash Megatron GPT config. Uh, or you, you can specify a different file, or it's really easy to override various elements um, in the um, YAML file. So you, it's easy to do like um, experiments tweaking just you know one small hyperparameter or like a, a subset of them. Um, you then you instantiate a PyTorch Lightning trainer, um, and the config file specifies um, what, what you want your trainer um, parameters to be, what you want your model parameters to be, and your experiment ma manager, what you want your experiment manager parameters to be. Um, so you can see when we instantiate the PTL trainer, it just looks in the config to find those parameters. Uh, then you call the experiment manager function. Um, An exper experiment manager just has some useful things like um, making sure uh, that you'll save your model checkpoints as you go along, and also logging the experiments for your results. And we have integrations with loggers like uh, TensorBoard and Weights and Biases. Biases. 
Um, yeah, then you just uh, instantiate, sorry, you instantiate your model and then you call trainer.fit and yeah, and that's it. Um, yeah, uh, let me go a little bit into ASR now. Um, some ASR 101, um, if for anyone not familiar. Um, the way most ASR pipelines work is um, you take your speech signal, you convert it to a MEL spectrogram, which is um, basically a representation of the frequencies present in your speech over time. Um, and then the heart of the matter is you have an ASR model, which takes in typically a MEL spectrogram and outputs the transcription of what was said in the model. Um, and there are different types of ASR models. Um, if you want to read up more about them, so there's CTC transduce, transducer, sometimes called RNNT or RNN, RNN transducer. Um, and also like models that we sometimes call AED or attention-based encoder decoder models. We have a bunch of um, pre-trained checkpoints that you can use. Um, and it's really easy to get started with ASR. You just load um, a model and then you call model.transcribe and you pass in the audio files that you want. Um, yeah, so we have, uh, we have uh, like I mentioned, we have a bunch of checkpoints uh, in various different languages. Um, I thought I'd bring your attention to um, the Hugging Face OpenASR leaderboard, which uh, lists the best performing models currently, the best performing, I guess, open source models currently just for English, I think. Um, and you can see it's like NVIDIA and uh, OpenAI was for models like jostling for the, for the top. Um, yeah, and in case you're wondering what are the, the metrics, the relevant metrics to consider. Um, so there's an accuracy metric called words error rates which is basically um, uh, how, how big is uh, the distance between the, the transcript that your model predicted and the transcript that is true. And you want that distance to be as low as possible. So you want the score to be as low as possible. There's also a speed metric called real time factor, which is, the, um, which is how long it takes you to process an audio file divided by the duration of that audio file. And hopefully, you know, the numerator is very small. So you want the real-time factor to be as low as possible. And you can see they're all like very low. Um, it's like times 10 to the minus three. Um, yeah, and something I find quite interesting about ASR. So um, the typical like research models, I would say, are like do offline um, speech recognition, which is where you, um, uh, you, you, you process the, you input the audio that you want to transcribe all at once. Um, but normally, you know, users, if they're talking to um, some ASR, they probably want to see the transcript coming up as they're speaking. Um, and that's what online ASR is for. So that's when you are transcribing, you're, you're taking in chunks of audio at a time and you're transcribing those chunks and then outputting the transcription. And we have some models that also do online streaming in Nemo. And I thought I would uh, do a demo um, showing one of them. It's the, the, that's the this is a one. demo of streaming speech recognition with Nemo, using a model specially trained to transcribe audio in a streaming scenario. It takes an audio in sequential chunks of 160 milliseconds, transcribes the chunks, and outputs the transcription for each chunk as soon as it is ready. Um, yeah, I just I wanted to say that's the the name of the model is um, at the top there. Um, yeah, we have a couple more ASR adjacent tasks uh, supported in Nemo. So things like speaker diarization, um, which is like who spoke when and allows you to add speaker labels to your transcript. Uh, we also support uh, speech translation and speech enhancement. And we also have various models for doing speech classification. And I thought I would share um, a, like a simple but fun model, uh, a demo that I made using the voice activity detection and a keyword spotting model, uh, which is voice controlled snake. Um, so I use a VAD model to see if there's speech or not. And then I use the keyword spotting to see if like one of the keywords was spoken and the keywords being up, down, left or right. Oh, and uh, before, I, before I go, I want to say I also, I made the uh, UI using the Gradio um, package, which is really helpful for um, making like, e making UIs using just Python code. Up, left, down, right, up. Oh, you can see I'm like quite tense. Left, um. <laughs> down, 
I, I actually got pretty good yeah. at this. This was a good run. Um, so I'll, I'll skip forwards. Um, the snake got pretty long. Um, yeah, so basically Down. what's happening is every um, Gradio allows you to do streaming, but in Left. like, fif currently it's like 50 second chunks. Oh. Sorry, 50 millisecond chunks. No, half a second chunks. Um, and yeah, every half a second, Left. I'm seeing what, what do I say, and, they, and then I upload the UI, UI um, uh, appropriately. And yeah, in the end, I wasn't quite fast enough, so I, I lost the game. Um, yeah, um, so moving on to LLMs. Um, so Nemo supports LLM training. Uh, we support like various different types of architectures and various different types of training modes. Uh, so like pre-training, uh, supervised fine tuning or parameter efficient fine tuning. We also support various types of uh, alignments like RLHF, which probably everyone here has heard of, DPO, which is like a more recent one. Um, also SteerLM, which is um, work uh, developed by our team recently. Um, so yeah, the code for that is uh, uses Nemo Toolkit, but it um, actually currently lives in a specialized repository for model alignments, which is it's called Nemo Aligner. Um, you can find it here. Um, I also made another demo for LLMs. Uh, so I thought, you know, one of the strengths of Nemo is that you can use ASR LLMs and TTS, you know, with the same code, um, in the same code base, I guess. It's yeah, written in the same toolkit. Um, and so I made a demo with um, an ASR model, um, a, a, like very like a baby LLM um, that was able to do extractive QA, which I got by running one of our Numo Laura tutorials, um, and also using um, a TTS model, um, well, to two TTS models, um, which you might I'll explain later why it's two. Um, yeah, and here is the model. So I ended up uh, uh, making a demo that uses Nemo Toolkit to talk about Nemo Toolkits. What are Nemo Toolkit models trained with? Oh yeah, wait. Um, I mean, let me just specify, I forgot to mention. So it's extractive QA, so it takes some context and then it answers questions based on the context, but it's extractive. So it's like the answers to the questions are located in, in the context. Um, I'm also, I'm also uh, when I, I noticed this morning that when I did the recording, the this bit coming up might be a bit loud, um, just because it came from my um, speakers, so just watch out. PyTorch Lightning. Okay, it's fine, it's a bit loud, but it's fine. How many GPUs can we scale our training up to? Thousands. What types of parallelism tricks do Megatron models use? Tensor and pipeline model parallelism. So there you go. Uh, and speaking of tensor and pipeline model parallelism, um, so we um, that's available in um, Nemo because we make use of uh, Megatron Core, which is um, another like piece of software developed by NVIDIA, uh, also open source, um, and it has a bunch of tricks uh, making it easy to scale to larger models, um, including yeah, tensor and pipeline parallelism and also activation checkpointing. Uh, you can also do FPA training on H100s in case uh, that's something you're interested in, uh, which uh, makes use of Transformer Engine, again, another open source software by NVIDIA. Um, and yeah, we also have, um, we also support flash attention, which uh, I think is just a simple flag to, to, to use. Um, yeah, and I thought I would uh, give a shout out to some work by my colleagues that I think is quite cool. Um, it's called SteerLM, and it's like a simpler alternative to RLHF. Um, they released a paper, uh, which you can find here recently. And uh, what's also kind of interesting is that as a byproduct of the alignment process, you also end up with a model um, that you can um, uh, you can toggle like um, you can toggle its outputs. You can toggle like how much of an attribute the output contains. So the, the attributes are things like quality, humor, toxicity, creativity, helpfulness. Um, and yeah, it's like interesting to toggle in case you want to. Um, and I know they did some evals and they found I think that. Um, uh, for, for the best evals, I think, were you set toxicity, humor, creativity to min, the minimum setting, and then everything else to 
um, high and it gave them um, good results. Um, and yeah, they released a model. Um, this is one of the models that they released using SteerLM. Um, so they took uh, the, the Llama 2 70B base model. They fine tuned it using SteerLM. Um, and so they found that it actually out outperforms um, the Llama 2 chat model on MT Bench. Yeah, and uh, there's uh, like more publicly available LLMs. Um, like for example, there's the Neumatron 3 8B um, family of models, uh, which is like a base model, three chat models, and a question and answering model. Um, yeah, let me also talk a little bit about uh, TTS. So uh, like I kind of hinted, well, basically there are two types of TTS methods. And um, like I hinted earlier, like I had to use two models for doing TTS. And that's because I had one model which was doing um, uh, turning like the transcripts into the MEL spectrogram. And then I had another model uh, that was turning the MEL spectrogram into um, the speech signal. So that's kind of like the more classical way I would say of doing TTS. Uh, but there's also like end-to-end, um, -end, you can also have end-to-end -end models that go like straight from transcription to speech signal. But I think it's like much trickier, it's a much trickier task. Um, yeah, and we have like a bunch of pre-trained checkpoints um, doing TTS and these are like the names of some of them. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, and so uh, for the demo, I mean, you heard some of the TTS voices, but I thought an interesting facet of TTS is that I would demonstrate today is uh, speaker interpolation, which is uh, basically synthesizing new synthetic voices by combining two or more existing speaker voices. So like what you can do, for example, if you have a model that accepts speaker embeddings as input, um, is you can generate new speaker embeddings for like non-existent speakers and then feed that to the TTS model. And so what, uh, what I did in the demo is like, uh, well, it's, it's actually one of the tutorials that we have um, on, on Nemo, sorry, on our, on our GitHub. Um, and yeah, you take two, two, two speaker embeddings, you make a like interpolated speaker embedding somewhere like between those two embeddings. And that kind of gives you a new speaker that is probably somewhere like their voice is somewhere in the middle between um, those existing speakers. Um, oh yeah, I, I just, um, I'll play you um, some samples from the um, tutorial notebook that we have. Hello world, speaker interpolation is cool. So that's the first speaker. Hello world, speaker interpolation is cool. And that's the second speaker. Hello world, speaker interpolation is cool. And then that's the like, uh, interpolated speaker and you can see like the, in terms of pitch like the voice is somewhere in between those two existing speakers um, hello yeah. world oh. speaker in um, yeah and uh, that's that's all I um, have for today um, thank you very much for your attention uh, if you want to learn more um, so one of my colleagues is actually going to be doing a keynote uh, tomorrow morning uh, you know, also, you know 24 7 we have uh, the github repository and the docs uh, and also, if you have questions, you can you know, ask me now or also, you know, my email if you think of something later. So, yeah, thanks very much. Yeah. Sorry, one sec. <laughs> so my question is, if you're interested in ASR and TTS models, what kind of uh, compute uh, or GPUs do you need? And then also, um, is a Nemo toolkit, do you need an NVIDIA GPU to run, or can it be something you run like on CPU or yeah. another GPU? Yeah, yeah, great question. So um, for the second one, um, uh, yeah, to train, you need an NVIDIA GPU, as far as I'm aware. Uh, if you want to do inference, you actually don't need an NVIDIA GPU. Um, actually, my the streaming demo, uh, I actually ran it on my Mac because I was working from home um, so, and I couldn't get the audio done remotely. Um, yeah, in terms of the amount of GPUs, I can't say off the top of my head. Uh, I know that ASR is like, if you want to train a really good ASR model, you need quite a lot. TTUs generally, uh, TTS generally doesn't need as many GPUs. Uh, but also one of the benefits is if you're interested in ASR, like, we release these pre-trained models that are trained on a lot of GPUs, but if you want to do fine tuning, it's quite, quite simple to do. And you can also um, do just like basic fine tuning, or you can do like, you know, freeze the 
um, like some of the later layers of the model. You can also use like adapters, and we have some functionality for adapters, uh, which are like very effective at, fi at fine tuning. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. About inference. Um, uh, yeah. So inference. If you want to do something basic on device, yeah, you don't need a GPU. I think if you want to do something really hardcore, uh, GPUs would help. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh yeah. yeah sorry. <laughs> Just a quick one. I. Uh, where is Whisper, uh, OpenAI's Whisper on this scale? I don't think I saw it oh, uh, in your uh, ranking. Um, or did I miss it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, uh, there's the OpenASR. Yeah. Um, so here you go. Uh, we were actually at the top until uh, Whisper released the oh, V3. Okay. I missed it. Um, which is trained on a lot more, a lot more data. <laughs> um, yeah. Great talk, thank you. Um, just real quick, do you have? Are you? Um, do you have access to the, some of the examples that you put up there? Do you have code? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So uh, yeah, I can I can show you. So the the streaming. Um, this was one that I made very recently. Um, so this is actually a combination of the. We have an online ASR notebook, and we have like some code that does that in like. A simulated streaming, and I kind of took them and made a, mish, mm, a mishmash. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm planning to have either that or some kind of like radio demo um, cool. soon. I'll, I'll email you for that for sure. And then, sure. Um, yeah, I mean, it seems like you're very close to uh, real time assistant type of, of, of app idea there. And I'm just wondering what types of techniques or tools would you use to reduce some of the latency that you're seeing with, with, um, you know, speech to text and then back to uh, uh, text to speech as well. Because, you, you know, in, in injecting that to like some sort of vector database to get results back and then speech to text mm -hmm. or text to speech again. I'm um, just wondering like what sort of approaches you might use to, to speed everything up. Yeah, yeah. Um, sorry, I'm not a good question. No, I'm not a good person to ask this question to. Uh, I do more, more research oriented things. Yeah, I'm sorry. But if you email me, I can definitely connect you. There's definitely people working on this. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I guess that's all. Yeah, thank you very much, everyone.